Welcome, everybody, and back to ProLine. Here we are for a midweek update. We've got Chip Cherimbus online. Uh, Dave is out this week, and uh, we got John Cranton filling in. I'm Jim Feist, and uh, this is a post-Super Bowl show, part two, because we did part one on Monday, and we're going to talk about a few games as well. Uh, we've got uh, the Hawks in Orlando in the NBA. We've got Wichita and Creighton. It's a big matchup there, and we got San Diego State against UNLV. That's another big matchup. Both are revenge spots. They had all, they both played earlier in the year, and uh, there's going to be a lot of interest in these games because of the top two teams in their respective conferences. So, uh, John, do you want to start off with the uh, the NBA game, the Hawks against Orlando? You and Chip can knock that out. Sure, we got a Friday night battle between the Hawks and the Orlando Magic. Interesting game as both teams uh, have had different types of seasons. The Atlanta Hawks have overachieved. They're doing it this season with a terrific focus on defense under this young coach. Problem for them, though, is the injuries, particularly in the middle. They have both centers that are out right now, and Alf Horford, he's out. Uh, for three months, he's got a torn pectoral. And then you got the backup center, too. He was lost this week. So the Hawks are on a nice road run, 4-1, and one, both straight up and against the number. But these injuries are significant, particularly on the road play, but also in a matchup like this against the Orlando Magic. This Orlando team has been a bit of an enigma, but you, there's no denying the talent on this team. I mean, they had that miserable four-game losing streak over 10 days ago. They lost to New Orleans by 26. That was embarrassing. Dwight Howard was saying, maybe I should get uh, traded. I want out of here. And then they lost 21 at home to Indiana and then five to a very good Philadelphia team. However, after that huge bump in the road, they did turn it around. They won three in a row. Granted, it was against some weak competitions. And then on Monday, they had a big matchup with the Clippers. Played very well and hard that game. Lost it in overtime. But again, there's no denying the town, particularly up front with Dwight Howard, 6'10", Hido Turgaloo, and 6'10", Ryan Anderson, who's only 23-year-old. This front court of Orlando should do very well against a banged-up Atlanta Hawks team. I wouldn't be surprised if the Hawks slow the pace down. Orlando, very good defensive team. In fact, when we look at the Magic when they're at home, they're on a spectacular 34-17-1 run under the total. This will be a good matchup between two very team, good teams in the East. Wouldn't be surprised to see a slowdown game, but I have to lean toward Orlando with that front court edge and the injuries to the Hawks. John, you covered it so well. Uh, congratulations. And one of the opening things you had said about Atlanta, you know, if there was ever a team on past performances, on records in what we've seen through the years, that I would have thought that would have folded with the injuries they had, John, like you were talking about, losing Holford and losing the center, and they've just had an injury after injury, and they've maintained it, and they've played very, very well. And like you said, the key is defense. They've been doing it through defense, and I, I'm quite surprised and quite pleased with what we've seen out of the Hawks because I never anticipated they'd be able to maintain this pace after the way they've been bludgeoned with, with these injuries. Orlando, you said it, um, it's difficult to figure out what they're going to be doing one night to the next. Uh, sometimes it doesn't look like you're getting any effort at all out of them. Um, do they want to play with Dwight Howard? Does Dwight Howard want to play with them? Um, I don't think it's a good situation other than the fact that, like you said, Atlanta's on the road. Atlanta has, I think it's a spot for Orlando to win. I think Atlanta's going to run into a little trouble here tonight. I think Orlando at home is the spot, and I would go with the, the Magic. Good analysis, guys. Uh, you know, I wonder how much uh, disruption there has been with Dwight Howard wanting to leave Orlando and all that talk. But uh, it's been a kind of a disrupted year anyway with the shortened schedule and the lockout and all that other stuff. Uh, we're going to move on to college basketball. we got Wichita State playing at Creighton. Now, earlier in the year, I'm looking at the Wichita State. They're coming off two wins. They've lost one game, and that was an overtime uh, game to Drake. I believe that was triple overtime, uh, minus nine and a half points. They lost the game 86-93, but then they came back with uh, a win over Missouri State and then a win over um, Indiana State. Uh, this is a pretty damn good basketball team. Uh, straight up on the year, I mean, they're 20 and 4. Now they're going to go up against Creighton, who they had beaten earlier in the year. Or no, excuse me, Creighton beat them earlier in the year, 68-61 at Wichita. So 
That's pretty unusual for Wichita to lose a home game. And uh, Creighton did it. And now they're going to Creighton. Now, I don't... The, the, the line in that game before was Creighton plus seven, Wichita was minus seven in that spot. I look for the line to kind of be around pick, maybe two, uh, one way. Uh, probably Creighton be about two because they're pretty tough at home as well. Uh, I think they're straight up. Their total record on the year is also 21-4. This Wichita is 20-4. Good teams. They usually win their home games. I'm looking at the ratings for these teams, uh, road and home. They're pretty neutral. Uh, last few games, uh, Creighton has covered uh, only one of their last four games, as to, as has Wichita. Pretty tough matchup. A lot of revenge spot when you lose your home game going on the road. I'd say Wichita plus the points. If you can get uh, maybe uh, three points in this game, I think that would probably be the angle I'd look for. Uh John, what do you think? Yeah, this is a big revenge game. And Wichita State team only has four losses the entire season. They've already hit 20 wins. You have two teams here that are in the top 30 in RPI, and these are the two best teams in the Missouri Valley Conference. So both teams are going to want to win this game. Look at the four losses that Wichita State has. They lost to number 15, Alabama. They lost to Temple in overtime. They lost to number 19, Creighton, in the earlier meeting at home, 68-61, and then Drake, that triple overtime game. Which do I love the front court on this team? This big seven footer they have with Garrett Stewart's terrific all around player shooting 58% from the field. They are one of the top shooting teams in the country. Great offense. They will be having revenge on this game. The thing about Creighton, Creighton's home and will be fired up with the game, but they've lost two in a row. This team has lost four games all season, but they've lost the last two. You have to wonder if they were in that look ahead spot the other night when they lost at Evansville. Weren't a big favorite in that game, but still, they didn't play very well. This team coming into this week was tops in the entire nation in field goal shooting. So that's an advantage. That's an edge that Wichita State has, but also Creighton can shoot the basketball. Great coach, too, here, Greg McDermott. And when you have two powerhouse teams like this that are matched up for the division title late in the season, what I look for is defense in matchups like this. Now, you look back at that December 31st meeting. Total on that game was 149. Well, Creighton shot 42% for the game, even though they won. And Wichita shot just 33%. So that's a great example, which we see all the time. When you have two powerhouse teams fighting for the division title, they know they're great. Both teams will bring the defense. That game went under the total, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is also a really close defensive game. Definitely, I'm looking at this one under the total. John, you're absolutely right. Uh, 149, 150, the game was ended up 129. There's going to be, I, I, I suspect, a pretty good adjustment. I'm looking at the records here. Creighton has gone under the total six of their last seven games. Uh, that's something to look out for. But the other side of it, Wichita is an over team. They've gone over six of their last seven games. Now, that's not against each other. But so if you look at just the Super Bowl we just had, everybody thought 56, 54 was a number. They didn't get anywhere close to going over. So when you're looking at big games like this that matter as much as this game matters, you're not going to be to see a big shootout, I don't believe. I think you're going to, but I think the odds makers, we don't have no idea what the total is going to be. I'd be surprised if they didn't adjust this thing down to like 139 or something along those lines because they were so far out of balance on the first game. So under would probably be the right side. And I would look for the, uh, I'd look for the road dog if you can get at least three in that spot. Yeah. These teams are uh, We're going to move on to the next game. Pardon These are the type of teams, too, that you can look at in the March tournament to pull off upsets over big-name schools, too. Teams that are somewhat under the radar, oh, yeah. small schools, but they can play with anybody. Now, now we got another game that's pretty much along the same lines as the one we just talked about, San Diego State and UNLV. Uh, both very, very good for basketball teams. Uh, I don't have their records right here in front of me, but they don't lose very much, and they did play earlier in the year. Uh, it was a war, and I expect another war here. Chipper, what do you think? I love the matchup, Jim. I, I, I've been right on with UNLV. I had the, the winner the first time with San Diego State that these two matched up, and um, the Mountain West has been very, very good to us. 
I have to think UNLV out here with their measure of revenge. I just think they're a better basketball team to start with. San Diego State is ranked higher than the Rebels are right now, and I don't think that's going to last too long, Jim. I think the Rebels at home are the side here. I think it's a, it's a strong play on Saturday. I'd lay the wood. And San Diego State, we've done, we've done well against them. We had Wyoming, and Wyoming defeated them a couple of days ago. So I have no problems coming against them here. I think that the Rebels are the side. Yeah, this San Diego State team really was a legitimate powerhouse last season. This season they are still very good, but they lost a lot of top talent from last year's team, so I think they have taken a step back. UNLV is in a little different boat. Uh, they really haven't lost uh, anything, and they've been much improved from last year. And even uh, people are projecting next year and the year after this, they look like a strong team as well. This RPI rating for UNLV is 10 one thing I think is going to be different in this game, I think UNLV being at home is going to run like crazy. That's their game. And when these teams met uh, last month, San Diego State did a terrific job holding UNLV to 14 points below its average. I can see uh, Dave Rice and the boys looking at that saying, look, let's play our game. We'll open it up with some three-pointers. We'll run the court. We're at home. we get got the crowd behind us. I wouldn't be surprised if UNLV gets out to a you know seven to ten point lead and then just continues to run right at them in this revenge sport because that was a close game that they lost 69-67 and uh, I look for some revenge in this one and home court. I'd like to add add something here when we're looking at this game. It's not like the Wichita Creighton game where you're going to see a very small number in that game. Like I said, you might be seeing two or three point favorite for the home side. This game figures to be, I hate to say this because it sounds ridiculous when you're talking about two teams with these kind of numbers, but you could be seeing almost a 10-point favorite for UNLV. They are that strong at home. So now we're looking at, I mean, I'm looking at all the numbers that I have seven different ways of making numbers, and there's not one of them under 10. So, so now if you're sitting at UNLV minus 10 against this club, boy, that's going to be tough. I mean, when I'm, when I'm looking at the road games for San Diego State, uh, they, they went to, they were plus 10 at New Mexico. They won that game. They won that game. They won that game. Then they went to Wyoming. They won that game. They were a dog in both those games. Now, and this is interesting. When, Okay, when Vegas played New Mexico, they were a favorite, but that was at home. They won the game by 17. They blew them out. And then they played, who's this other game, Wyoming? They lost at, well, uh, Vegas lost at Wyoming where San Diego State won. So there's yeah, sort of but, like a reverse of numbers there. Uh, well, uh, yeah, that's true. But Wyoming was a two-point, or excuse me, San Diego State was a two-point dog. Vegas was a, a four-point favorite. There's a six-point difference in the right. line. Okay, now if you have, Vegas has a big home court advantage. It's one of the highest in the country. You could argue, say, it's a six or seven-point home court rather than a three or four. Yeah. So if there's a six-point and then you throw the six, you're looking at twelve. Now all my That's numbers a huge are number ten. In this game. Yeah, That's a it's big a number it's in this a, game. Yes, it is. Uh, it's. That would be that would be tough. that's a tough game to handicap. I'm, I personally am not going to go in there and lay ten points with you and LV. Yeah. Although I like yeah. them to win, yeah. I'm not going to lay. You know, put a gun to my head. I'm going to take ten points. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just a big number, and it's it's based on you and LV how they play at home. I mean, their numbers at home are massive. All right. But this is a big a big revenge spot. It's a tough tough game to figure out. Uh, Chipper, what do you have going this weekend? Any uh, specials yeah. or anything? Yeah, Jim, thanks for asking. Um, we've had a great Saturday so far. Last week, 3-1, and one, stubbing our toe only about Wisconsin. But I have a really special offer to everyone out there. You can get these games online, of course, for $49. But on Saturday, I'm going to give you my top three, including my conference game of the year. We're going for our third winner. Earlier, Jim, thought it was a little early to start with conference game of the year winners. Going for our third one this Saturday. That's included for only $10. Call 866-899-9462. That's my three top plays Saturday, including my conference game. As a matter of fact, if you call for, you call now, you call Friday, 
We'll give you Friday's NBA and NCAA basketball with no additional charge. Jim, it's a great offer because we've done so well with our college basketball so far on Saturdays. 3-1 and one last week. We're, I believe we're like 14-4 and four and 6 Saturdays so far, and we're going after them again. Three top plays, only $10, including conference game of the year. 866-899-9462. Give me a call. Great offer, Chip. People should take Thanks. advantage of that for sure. Uh, John, um, I know you're filling in for Dave, but do you have any idea what he... Yep, Dave has a special going this week. You get 10 days of Dave's hoops for just 10 bucks. That's going to include a Saturday high roller window game. And if you call Friday and sign up for that, you'll get Friday's window game. So you get 10 days of hoops from Dave for 10 bucks. 1 866 841 1665. Great, great offer. I know Dave's been doing, as Chipper has, uh, doing very well in college hoops. Uh, I have a college basketball conference game of the year parlay going on Saturday. That's two games for $10 with a 2-0 and guarantee. You will go 2-0 and or the rest are free. And if you sign up on Friday, you'll get my Friday night NBA home court game of the year. I'm 28-16 in the NBA game of the years this year. And talk about a bankroll builder for ten dollars. You make the call one eight six six eight four one sixteen fifty five. This is a great way to build a bankroll. Two and zero guarantee. Game of the year stuff going on. Power plays. Ten dollars. One eight six six eight four one sixteen fifty five. You know, we, we we guys, we just saw a pretty damn good Super Bowl. It wasn't perfect. We had a little theatrics at the end with Giselle Bunchen, and I mean she's good to look at, uh, but she's got to stay out of the game. You know, <laughs> it's, it causes. Yeah. I'm not going to go there. But, but I don't the mind Super her Bowl, defending Brady, but she no, towards no, no, his teammates all. under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he can't do that because he's got to walk into that locker room and, and deal with these guys. He's got to work with and these the guys. And the after effects are not not good. No. Well, it's not good. Well, New, New Yorkers will get under your skin a little bit, Jim. <laughs> oh, we we are well aware. Hey, listen, Eli Eli and Coughlin have been fired every year for the last five yeah. years. Yeah, you know, yeah. God bless what them do they? Both. <laughs> you know, I don't know how they put up with it. Maybe if Peyton goes up there and plays for the Jets, that would be an interesting uh, situation. Uh, I don't see it happening. That Jet team is in trouble, Jim. They got some big internal problems, and I don't, I don't think he'd put himself in that situation. He doesn't need that, does he? Oh, he needs a team. He doesn't that can need win. anything. <laughs> but, but at I his age, putting up with that crap, I don't know if he wants to put up with it. it. At his age, with you know, he's at the end of his career. He's got a couple years, maybe, maybe two or three. Uh, the only reason he wants to play is to get another ring, especially now that his brother has two. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's it, but Eli is very good. I mean, nobody gives him any credit, but he is very good. Uh, what team do you think he should go to, Chipper? I, I would love, believe it or not, for him to go to a team that already has an established quarterback. I'd love for see him, see him to stay in the division and go to the Houston Texans. Let him go to Houston with Andre, to Andre Johnson. They got a great running game. They got one of the, the most formidable defenses in the NFL right now. I think if he goes there, they win it. And now they got Schaub. I understand that, but you know you're we're talking about Peyton Manning if he's healthy, Jim. Otherwise, it's a no go. Well, who's going to start in Houston? I think he should. Uh, who's going to what? I, who's going to start? Be the starting quarterback in Houston. <laughs> Take him right to the Super Bowl. Schaub or uh, Schaub's coming off an injury. Schaub's Schaub's gone. Peyton would be the starter. Schaub, Schaub's gone. I'm just I'm just thinking, you're thinking how we, I just think it would make everything really interesting because I think that team is is up and coming. And with him, All right. I think they got they're let over me, the top. Let me throw this in. I agree with you that Houston, with a solid quarterback, could have won it all this year. Now they did lose. They did lose their top two quarterbacks, so I, you know they still did pretty damn well. They got yep. a great running game. Uh, their defense has played very well, but I think Schaub is a pretty capable quarterback. And uh, I just, 
there was no and question. Hayden, I'm not. I'm not challenging him. I'm just saying that if you if you have Manning in that mix, I think they win. And all right. If you're Shop looking, can't win. Shop could win. He's good enough. If you're looking at that scenario, let's move west a little bit. All right. Let's take another team that is also very solid, but has a more marginal quarterback, in my opinion. Yeah. In San Francisco. Right. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, no, because you know, Crabtree, you have some great receivers, and you, we know you have the power game, right? I mean, and a and great defense. Right. I, I'm just wondering, you know, Alex Smith is expendable, and this is he's at the end of his, his term here, right? I mean, his contract's up. So I think that's a possibility. I really do. Now, the, the uh, one of the teams that seems to be the front runner in this, and I don't know how this is going to work out, it's down with you. It's Miami. And I know you don't have a very high opinion of Miami. Well, not a, not of the organization or what they're doing down here, but the the papers today and the and the, all the talk radio shows down here, Levitard and all the other bananas, um, insist that Pete Manning loves South Florida, that he loves living here, that his family loves it here, and they think that they've got an inside track to him. Because you're definitely going to take Manning over more. There's no question about that here. And um, can Miami maintain a strong nucleus? Their defense has been really solid for a number of seasons, but they need to get over the hump offensively. You got Marshall, one of the, a great receiver when he catches the ball, and he's not when he's not causing problems. I mean, not that four touchdowns in the Pro Bowl mean anything, but um, no, Please, it's, no. This organization here, the way they draft. Uh, um, I'm wondering if he might not just be wasting his time if he comes to Miami. That's you know, it's, I think it's a tough well, place to win. Moving up the coast a little bit, he is from Tennessee, and they don't have much at the quarterback position right now because, I mean, Hasselbeck is is good, but he's he's older and he's prone to a lot of injuries. Now, and he's missed a lot of time due to injuries. They have a backup quarterback that might have some potential, but he's, it's going to take a little while to get him there. But but the uh, point in that, Tennessee, Jimmy. where's the where's this mom and dad live? New Orleans, Louisiana. Yep. Okay, no, well, he won't he won't go there. He won't be going there. So that's interesting. Yeah. But I think we're going to know within two weeks uh, a little bit of, about what all this where this is going. Yeah, well, they're having a meeting, Ursay and Manning, uh, this week, and uh, amicably, hopefully, hopefully, uh, I think he moves on, Jim. I, I don't see how they they keep him with what's already happened, unless, like they said, that his contract is strictly in incentives, where he doesn't get the big money. But, but he can get the big money. He's still Peyton Manning if he's healthy. Yeah, he's definitely moved well, on. If he's healthy. It's like yeah. the, uh, the the Brady Bledsoe thing ten years ago, where Belichick later admitted yeah. you can't yeah. pay two star quarterbacks that kind of money. Yeah. It's up the roster and everything. Yeah. The rumor I heard is that Arizona would be big for him because of their wide receiver talent. I don't really buy it because their defense is so bad. <laughs> I, I, I think they're too far away. away. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah, it does. And maybe even the Vikings. I mean, remember what they did with Far two years ago? Maybe they've got enough talent. All they need is a quarterback. I'd be a little bit of a long shot, but. It's another possibility. You know, I hadn't heard anything about the Vikings. That's the first time that's come up. Well, that's an interesting idea. Probably because Peterson may be done for the whole year. So, you know, it sort of takes them off the radar. I mean, if he's going to have no run support there, uh, he's going back into another a futile situation. It, it's, it makes for a lot of... Um, I'm actually glad to be talking about Peyton Manning rather than Tim Tebow. <laughs> well, he is going That's a subject we know for that. another day. <laughs> That's right. Um, anything else you want to cover, uh, Chipper? No, I, I think that's just about it. I'm, Jim, we got some great things going this weekend. You got a big game of the year. I've got a game of the year with with two other plays on Saturday, and uh, it's only ten dollars for me at eight six six eight nine 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 four six two eight six six eight nine nine. Nine four six two plethora of winners for you. Get on board with the big game player, another conference game of the year winner. I'll share. You know, with if, you. You, if you go ahead, John. You, you, your Dave's offer is another ten bucks. Ten days of of, of hoops for ten bucks. It's, that's not too bad. I'll do Dave offer with you, and I'll share a Super Bowl story. I ended up breaking even on my prop bets, and I was at a party, and the the lady sitting next to me, as usual. 
as always happens, she made 21 prop bets. First time in her life she's ever done a prop bet. Not even that big on uh, on football to begin with, but she got fired up in it. She ended up going 14 and 7 on her prop bet. So I'm sitting there with, you know, <laughs> going 50%. And she's, every two minutes she's going, oh, look, I got another one. Oh, another winner. Another. So I felt terrible. <laughs> anyway, Dave Koken has a special 10 days of hoops for 10 bucks. If you sign up, you can get Saturday's window game included. That's a high roller play. And if you want to call Friday, you can start a day earlier and get 10 days for 10 bucks, and you'll get Friday's window game as well as Saturday's window game. 10 days uh, for 10 bucks of hoops from Dave, 1-866-841-1665. And I'm going to add right in there, I'm just thinking about this. If you pay $10 for chippers, $10 for Dave's, and $10 for mine, you got a boatload of winners coming your way, guys, and, and you should really consider making those phone calls. My number is 1-866-841-1655, college basketball conference game of the year parlay going on Saturday. That's two games. You're guaranteed to go 2-0, and or the rest of, the, of February's hoops is absolutely free. And you get a bonus if you do it on Friday. You'll also get my Friday night NBA home court game of the year. Make that call, $10, 1-866-841-1655, and make sure you call for Dave's numbers and Paul's as well. And until uh, next time, uh, that's over and out. Good show. Thanks, guys. Good seeing you, Jim. Take care. Take care. Bye. Give us a call, everyone. <laughs>